Okay, so we need to make this uh, MD5 for the directory, make it uh, do them all at the same time. Right now they do it, it does them one at a time, okay? And so we can use GoRoutine to do that. Um, we can start out like this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through directory for each file. I'm going to start a new GoRoutine. It's going to go MD5 file path, sorry, MD5 file path. I'm going to go get the MD5 and the print. So, this is sort of the naive version. I go install it and I call my MD5. And it worked, but actually it didn't work because there's a, there's a file in here. And it didn't get that one. And the reason it didn't get that one is there's nothing in this program making it wait. So it just happened to work for the first one. But uh, when, when the walk finished, it it didn't wait for all the go routines to complete, okay? So they just died. Uh, and so we have to use a wait group to, to do that. Um, we can do that really easily by saying var um, and then sync.wait group. Okay, before we do the go here, we say add one. After we finish printing, we say done. Outside of the loop, we say wait. Okay. And then we run our program again. Now we get both of them. Now this does them all simultaneously, so if I go up here and do, it does them all simultaneously. Let's do it even bigger. And you get the idea. Um, that's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so, uh, one possible issue with this, and Todd ran this issue, uh, you know, you can only open so many files on your computer at the same time. It'll say, you know, if you open too many, it'll be like, you're not allowed to do that. And this really does try to open all of them simultaneously. So, how could we limit the number of go routines? In other words, if I have 10,000 files, this might start 10,000 go routines. Yeah? Before you uh, change the code, can you scratch that open, please? Thank you. Um, so, there's a couple of ways we could do that. Uh, one is, it's possible to make a wait group without a channel, I mean, sorry, as a channel instead of as a wait group. So, I could, for example, say, you know, var c chan, or make, let's do it this way, c colon make chan. And let's just say it takes a string, um, and then I could take like this format that sprint f instead of, and then I get rid of these wait groups. Okay, so now here's the tricky part. So this is how we can emulate a wait group. I less than, uh, sorry, this should be n. Well, this isn't going to work. Though maybe it'll be an interesting example of why it won't work. So I greater than zero, I minus one. Um, and so I can pull off the channel. Okay, so here's the idea. I'm going to run all these Go routines. They're all going to implement I, and then I'm going to print them. There's a bug in this code. So when I'm minus minusing here, I'm going back down again. So I'm basically trying to do the same thing the wake group is doing. Yes, it did. Something bad happened. Okay. Um, well, there's probably more than one bug here, but this here, this here is a problem. Okay. 
So this is the same variable, i. Two things are trying to access it at the same time. And bad stuff happens when you try to modify the same variable at the same time. Okay? You corrupt memory and weird stuff. So this is why we tend to use channels instead of the variables like this. So this is a bug. Um, you were saying that i is greater than greater or equal to 0. So this should really be outside of oh. here. Um, yeah, that, that might be wrong too, but let's, let's see. I really shouldn't be doing this in here, so I'm take two. Have you heard your computer? No, what I'm does not that mean sure. corrupt memory? Uh, it you means your program will crash. Okay, so then you just have to restart. No, your program will crash, that's all. Um, so maybe some, something's not right about this. Should we put a limit to how many files is in this camera? There we go. You're, you were right, it was supposed to be greater than greater than equal. Um, so that, that works. So I've simulated the weight group with channel. Well, now I gotta give you this gold star. Channel and a counter. And so I did it that way. Does everybody follow what I did there? So this guy's pulling out of that channel, and I use the counter, and then I just deck him out the counter until he's done. So the order these come out is not necessarily the order, it's not necessarily like if, if I had a file ABC, right? Um, I have these five four files, it's then going to go try to do MD5 on all of them, right? It's going to do MD5 on A, and then it's going to try to write that to a channel. So it's going to go, um, you know, whatever the string was, uh, A, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever the hash is. Uh, the order here is not necessarily going to come out here, A, B, C, D. The order, what is the order when it comes out? Like if I, I'm reading them at A, B, C, D, but how do they come out? Whichever one finishes Exactly, whichever one finishes first. So actually, probably what's going to happen is the, the shortest files, the smallest files, will probably finish faster than the longer files. So probably what I'll see here printed are all the smallest files and the bigger ones as they go on. Something like that. Uh, but it's not exact, right? Because this also might take a while to walk through all the files, so the order they get started changes, and there's a lot of unpredictability in that. Um, so so the, the order of this is not the order that came in. Just keep that in mind. Sometimes people find that surprising. Uh, but it's because they're all happening simultaneously. Um, okay. It's kind of weird for me to whiteboard for you to write on and have the code. Like, Earlier, you wrote on something, you scrolled the code, and I expected what you wrote to scroll, and it was like, I'm like, wait! And I'm like, oh, it's the whiteboard. And then I was just right there, I was like, wait, don't erase the code. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, limiting. Copy I, that over, too, please. Before you erase it. Yeah, before you erase it. Thank you. Okay, so I think a, a, a different strategy we could take is we could break up our program into steps, okay? And the idea is that with multiple steps, we can put channels between the steps, and then we could have a whole bunch of things running those steps. So I have, in this program, I might have uh, the, the walk step, and then I might have the MD5 step, and then I might have the print step. And the idea is that I only need really one walk step, and I only need one print step. But I'd like to have a lot of MD5 steps, like a lot of them running simultaneously. So I'd like, you know, a lot of these, right? So let's say 100. And so if I think in this way, I can control how many files I'll do simultaneously by only starting 100 of these MD5 right? And then we communicate with the channel between them. Okay. 
Okay? So I'm going to do walking. I'm going to send in file names to the MD5 groups. We're going to take file names and do the MD5 with it and send that to the printer. Okay? Follow it? Yeah. That's but awesome. I've broken the code down into three steps and I'm going to write a function for each step with channels connected. And then in my main function, I'm going to start those, those steps. And I'm going to say however many I want. So I could have 15 walkers, or I could have you know, 20 printers, or just one of each, or whatever. I can control it. Um, though with walkers, it wouldn't make much sense to start one and one, because then you get a lot of people. Uh, but that's the idea we're going to try. So we, we have MD5 file here. We'll keep that function, and I'll say, Step one, or maybe we'll just call it walk step. He's going to take a channel of string. That's right. This is an output channel. So let me show you that from the spec. Oops. Let's go to channels. Turns out, in addition to that element type, sorry, let me, okay. <laughs> uh, we can add arrows to the type name, and that specifies in more detail that it can either only receive or only send. Okay? So it's not this more general channel. It's like, because normally with a channel I can either send or receive to it, this is like a channel that I'm only allowed to send to, or I'm only allowed to receive. And that gives us a little more uh, control over the program. Gives a little more safety. It means I can't like accidentally receive from it too. Um, so that's sometimes nice. And in this case, we know how it works, right? So it's like, uh, let's read the spec. The optional arrow operator specifies a direction. Send or receive. The direction is not given by directional. So this can only be used to send floats. Putting it out. So I only want to be able to and we'll call this uh, file name channel, okay? So what, it, what walk does is he's gonna walk a directory and send all the file names on the file name channel. So we can just copy that from here, right? And for the heck of it, we'll just put directory, string, and then you can specify the directory. Why not? Um, and so that instead of doing this bit of code here, so I'm going to cut that out of here, we're going to say file name channel and pass the file name. All right. So I'm no longer doing the go routine here. I'm just sending this to the channel. And then we're going to have a step for. Uh, question. Yeah. I can end my answer. MD5 step, and it'll it'll take in a channel, right? So the same file name channel. That's going to take in and send out, right? Nope. Isn't it in the middle? It only receives. It takes two channels. So it has one channel for getting the file name and another channel for sending out. Oh, okay, okay. And in this case, we could do the string. I'm going to send the... the <coughs> this string, okay? So it's going to be a string as well, right? Uh, so this is going to be the sum info channel, and it's going to take a, a channel you're only allowed to send to. All right, and so what I'm going to do is this, four, and there's a, there's a range for channels as well. So for file name, range, file name, channel, that, that's going to pull from that file name channel for as long as I can. It's going to file name each time. I'm going to do this to get the bytes, and then I'm going to do this to send them to the other channel, okay? To some info channel. Really simple. So now we have our MD5 step. This is called file name. And then we need one final step for printing. So we'll call it the print step. And he's going to take in the same sum info channel, 
but the channel goes the other direction because it can only receive it, so you can't send to it. So, so what is this going to happen? Yeah, but how do we read things from the sum inverse channel? Yeah, it's got to receive. So, this message is equal to. We could do that, but look at line 36. That's a much easier way to do it, right? So, when you say it's a channel you can only to receive from, you're really saying at this end of the channel. Yes, exactly. Because the channel is. That's right. Put into it. So, there's an end that can only be. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way of thinking about it. Like I have a whole channel, and I can pass in a whole channel, but I can also pass in one end of the channel. And then this guy, he, he can't he can't send to that channel because he's only got the receiving end. So we're going to do the same range, and this is a string, and we're just going to print it. Okay. So we can get rid of all that stuff. Now instead of C, we need to make these two channels. So uh, file name channel and some info channel, or both channels of strings. Okay. Now these types, you know, they're different, but it turns out you can take any channel of a string and convert it into this kind of channel, right? the receiving channel or ascending channel. Um, you, you're allowed to pass that into any function. Right? So it's like I have the full channel. And when I call it, it only takes a, you know, one of the ends of it. So if I say, go the walk step, and I say the current directory, and I give it file name channel, I'm allowed to do that, OK? So in other words, main has access to both ends of the channel. But as soon as I hand it off to this walk step, it's only got access to one. OK? And then I say, if I only want one MD5er, I'd say it this way, and I'd give the file name channel and the sum info channel. And then I don't have to say go for the last one, okay? Because I could just use the main function. So I can say print step, okay? So this is the idea I've made sort of like a pipeline. I'm sending data in here, I can go to here, Does everybody follow what the order of the steps is here? Um, this happens. Well, is it possible, like, with the go, go, sorry, let's finish that question. So, so everybody understand the steps you're saying this happens? Yeah, this happens. Then it gets sent through here to here. Then we go and we five it. Then we send it from here no. down here. And then it prints it, right? So it comes through here and prints it. So this program is not really uh, doing these multiple. It's only doing one at a time. Yeah? Uh, if you were to put a go on the print step, would it just start them all and then quit the program? Yeah, so the problem is if we just did go print step, uh, it would just finish immediately, right? Because I'm not waiting on anything. So you just die. But if I, if I do this, I'm doing the print step right here, so he's going to wait until this is finished, which I'll show you in a second, and then exit. So, so if we did go, it wouldn't work. We, we, we need to do it directly, or we have to do the wait group thing that we did before. Okay. Makes sense. Can you go on walk step because it's only doing one complete walk group, right? Uh, good point. We could, we could, for example, do this, and then do walk step. We could, we could do that. Except we'll never get to print step if we do that. Can you add wigs into this, or is it wigs, or is wigs like an alternative? What did you say? Can we wait? Oh, a wait group. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was saying if, if, we, if we go go the last step, we would need a wait group. But we, we can't. We The reason we have to make this go is because He's pushing onto this channel, he's sending on this channel. He's receiving, and when he's done receiving, he's sending on this one. So this printer's got to be running too, okay? So if we do the walk step directly, we have to make the printer go in the background. 
But if we do the printer directory, we have to make the walk step go in the background. But one of them has to be right. happening simultaneously. So um, there's an issue with this code, which we'll see in a second. All right. I just have a question. Yeah? So uh, just like if you're out, you have your uh, walk, go walk, and then you have your go, do the hash, and, and, uh, and the, the go, uh, do the hash has that four range. And you're doing them both at the same time. Well, if the MD5 step fires up and says, "Okay, I'm going to four range," but oh, it's listening on the channel, right, for something, and the channel's already been created, so it doesn't just execute 36 through 38 and say nothing there and stop, because it's just going to continue listening. Is that it's right? going to wait until something shows up on the channel. Okay, it waits until something shows up on the channel. Okay, got it. Yeah, that's what the range does. It's like doing. It's, it's basically the same as for. Uh, that's good. All right, that's cool. Okay. And then how's it know when it's at the end of the channel? How's I'll, I'll show you in a second. Good question. This, this, this code, well, let's see what it does. So we installed it, and now I'm running my MD5. Oh no. All go routines are asleep, deadlock. Okay. Hey, Sounds familiar. <laughs> The issue why that happened was these these ranges never finish. They can't finish because they're all waiting on this channel and you never told it to stop. And the way you tell a channel to stop is you close it. Okay? So I close file name channel. Right? And then when this guy finishes, I close some info channel. Uh, which we can do. We don't need to close this one because it's closed here. Okay. So the idea is if I have two channels, I need to close both of them, and I'm closing them here. And so when do I close the channel? I close when I've finished writing all the files to the channel. And then when do I close this channel? I finish when I've finished md 5 all the channel, all the files. So you know it, it starts adding them, and then as soon as it finishes the last one, it closes it. And the way range works is it is it pulls values from the channel until it's closed. And when it's closed, range breaks. Right. So. The How do we know the difference between uh, channel closing and channel just not having anything to say this momentarily? Uh, right, so the, the range, the, when you pull from a channel, unless something's there, it waits until something shows up, right? Because they're, they're synchronized. So uh, this is just going to wait until a file name shows up. But is it going to get a message that it's finished from the others? When close happens, then it, yes, it breaks the loop. So there's an expanded form of close, close file name channel. Yeah, we did that up here. When yeah. that's done, they're going to send a message to MD5 step that's in one order to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The range stops when that happens. When this if the channel, channel is closed, range, not your code. It range finishes. When it closes. Okay. Yeah. It won't close until the previous function is done. Same thing. It closes when this is called. Right, okay. Uh, and so. There's an expanded form. Remember we said message, colon, equal? Yeah. It turns out, like with the maps, there's an expanded form called like this. Okay? It can return two values. The first is the thing on the channel. The second is whether or not it was closed. So what happens is when you close a channel, it causes the thing waiting to return the default value of whatever it was. So it would return the empty string. But this thing would tell you, that's not really what I was sent. That's because it was closed. And range understands that. And it's like, oh, you said you know, it was closed. So then I say, oh, I'll break the loop because I know there's nothing left. We're done. Okay. Yeah. So in general, this, the pipeline approach is there's a first step. He writes on a channel. There's all the middle steps. They have two channels, one they're receiving from and one they're writing to. And then the final channel is just read. Okay. So that's a pretty common pattern. I can have lots of other steps in between them, but that's a pretty common pattern. Okay, and so in the first and intermediate steps, I need to close the final channel. Though it's slightly different, we'll see in a second. But this should work now, I think. Okay, no deadlock, everything's great. And it went, uh, it did it, uh, it did all of them, right? It didn't uh, do any extras. Okay. Yeah, can you uh, what, 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 uh, scratch that up? Please?
Okay, so this is still only doing one MD5 at a time, so it's just one story in. So if we want to do 100, we can say 4i colon 0, i less than 100, i plus 4. There's an issue with this. Anybody know what the issue with what I'm doing here is? Oh, uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of MD5s, but they can't collect 100 to put out 100. Well, if you're saying go 100 times, and every time you say go, it just says, all right, I'm going to launch this as many times as I need to do it, right? The problem no, is no, to launch 100 MD5 steps. Is the problem, is 100 too many? No, no. The this is the closing. issue. I closed it 100 times. You're only allowed to close it once. So let's see what happens. <laughs> yeah, bad things. 499 out of 99 errors? Well, one error. Close of a closed channel. You're not allowed to close a channel twice. So that's a problem. Um, right. You could just close the channel in the print step instead of the MD5 step. You could do an if statement there. Right? If what? If it's open, close it. Yeah, we could try that. Does anybody know what the issue with that is? So close on the first one. Um, the issue with that is, in between the checking and the happening, other things can close on Okay, This is like classic uh, multi-threaded nightmare trying to think through problem, right? Is that this object, this sum info channel, can change in between. So if I have, uh, I, there is a closed function, right? Let's go to the spec here. Um, there's a function, built-in mm -hmm. function that we can use to determine whether or not a channel is open. So where is that guy? Uh, Built-in functions, here we go. So here's close, length, capacity. Um, maybe you can't do that. But it doesn't matter anyway, because even if you could, it's not safe. So um, you, you can't do that. Do, do you understand why that you can't do that? Because there's multiple things happening at the same time. They're all interacting with the same object. If I modify the same object, like there's no guarantee of when that happens. So I can't. How do about defer? Uh, defer would wouldn't help us either because it would still happen a hundred times. Can you restate the problem? The problem is that I I can only close a channel once. And I started 100 MD5 steps, and they all closed the channel. So I closed it 100 times, and that's, that causes a panic. I'm only allowed to close it once. That's the problem. Uh, so create another function, and then on your 100th step, call the, that function which closes. Right. So this is, this is the general approach you take. So if I move even close from the steps, and I'm going to create a function in here. Okay, it still isn't right though. <laughs> this is where you use the weight group. Right, this is where you use the weight group. Okay, so. Start another function. Okay. Sorry, this should be weird. Okay. So I start these, I signal when they're done. When they're done, I close the summon function. Okay. So I start a hundred of them, they're all gonna wait. Another way we can do this. Wait, before you do it the other way, we get that way from scratch. Or it's just really no good way. <laughs> um, okay. 
So I, I say go do this thing, and I make a weight group. I start 100 of them, add one for each one, and then I say go do the MD5 step, get up the channels, and when it's done, signal the weight group is done. And I'm going to wait and then find the quote. So this general pattern for, uh, you could wrap that in a function, right? I could make something like go do a lot of this. Um, but that's the general approach. What, what's the add one? Like, what's it adding? Like, what's the add one? Adding one second. Adding one way. Yeah, one task. One thing is running. So let's see if that fixes our problem. That's really pretty much the solution I came up with. <laughs> But I'm saying you could, you could make this a function and clean it up a little. Why, why was the uh, some info channel closing every time it was outside the for loop? Because that for loop is running 100 times. Because oh. there's 100 of these running. Um, do you think you can just like re-articulate? I mean, just explain. I mean, this is sort of capping everything that we've done in the last couple hours. Like the, how do you solve, how does the weight group, I'm so confused by weight group, so like how does the weight group solve the problem of the close open thing? Okay, so before this close happened up here. That function is running 100 times. So close ran 100 times. So that doesn't work. So I moved it down here. This only happens once. I create a weight group, I add one 100 times. So this weight group will be set to 100, and then I wait. I also kicked off the MD5 step 100 times. And each time that MD5 step finishes, I decrement weight group. You what? Decrement weight group. I make it minus one. When weight group equals zero, this finishes, and then I only close the sum info channel once. Okay? So this go routine finishes after all the MP5 steps have finished. And your call, are you calling something with those empty parentheses after the function? Or is it? It's anonymous self-invoking. Anonymous self Okay, so Did that function take I think we can make this function a little, uh, we can make a helper. So run multiple, okay? And you're gonna give it an int for the number you would like to run. And then a callback for the function you would write to run. Okay, and the idea is that we're gonna copy this bit of code here. Wait group. This becomes n. We're gonna do this. So we're going to call the call back. We'll do it n times. Then we'll wait. OK. We can use this to simplify what we just had. So now, instead of all this ugliness, we can do one of two things. We can pass in the channel here, or we can do it in here. So let's see what either of those work, work like. Um, so I can say and then just, just this bit of code and then that. That's not too bad. Yeah, it still works. Questions? So yeah, 
run this guy, this function, 100 times. And when all of them are done, throw this to some other channel. Now, I could probably bring that out a little bit, but I think it's okay running it like this. I could start the printer and then just do this directly. Kim, since only walks that can put one on a channel at a time, and then MD5 that can only take one off a channel and put it on the next channel one at a time, don't they kind of have to still wait for each other? They do have to wait for each other, but, but is, it, is it still faster than taking that? Oh, one? much faster, because what we're seeing is uh, there's one walker, right? And there's a lot of MD fibers. Um, and there's, a, there's a lot of these. And then they're all coming back. So, in that picture of the gophers, there's one on this side, there's one on this side, and there's hundred in the middle. So the one on this side is like a really fast gopher, okay? He does things super fast. And the one on this side does too. It's always going to be printing. So one in here, these guys are kind of, they're slow gophers, right? They take a while to do what they need to do. And so since the bulk of work's happening here, um, each one of these might take a second or two, right? These are taking like nanoseconds. Okay. So he can feed lots of books, and the book burning part is slow, and at the end of printing is fast again. Okay. So that's why this works. So we sort of fan out, and then we come back in. And the idea is that uh, between each of these, we could have more steps, and we could size them independently. Right. So maybe 100 makes sense here, maybe 3 makes sense for one step, maybe 5 makes sense. But we can control them independently. That's really awesome. So this is a general strategy for doing pythons. Uh, this little bit of code might be a little complicated, but that's the idea. And we're signaling uh, the completion of steps with closing of channels. Um, okay. So that's the basic idea of channels. Any more questions about that? Just caught, we got, did we get that already? We got that. We got, it. Um, got it. Let me get rid of what we got so you know we got it. All right. Hold on.